All right. Welcome to the June 3rd, 2021 Planning Board meeting. If everyone could rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Tonight, we have Paul Anatucci to my left and Phil Roy to my right. Um, and do we have Amber on? Or? Amber, no. No, okay. All right. So, the first thing we have up is the public hearing for abutters to Nomad Court and Hal Flinger Lane. Um, if anyone would like to speak, uh, come up to the podium here. And uh, James will write down any questions you have. Um, the applicant or the board will answer in old business. My name is Kim Jakes. My husband, Mike Jakes, and I live at Three Halflinger Lane. Uh, we purchased our property in December of 2016 from Richard Damaris and subsequently built our forever home um, as we had selected uh, Halflinger Lane uh, cul-de-sac subdivision. I do want to clarify that we were aware that there was a possibility that Damaris parcel would be developed. If you guys have started the meeting, I can't hear anything. You guys are muted. Thank you. We should be good now. I can hear you. Great. Here we go. Sorry. Oh, we're good. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'm running by photos too. So um, I do want to clarify that we were able, uh, that we were aware that there was a possibility that the Damaris parcel would be developed in the future. At our closing, we initialed the original 2008 subdivision plan with approximately 18 homes in addition to the revised 2014 plan, which shrunk the footprint to four lots in a right of way to a 24 acre, acre back parcel, albeit we understood the back parcel to be one to two building lots. The concern is with the magnitude of the proposed subdivision and the utilization of the right of way to create a throughway to the remaining development in Norman Fort. As residents of Hathlinger, we all bought into the cul-de-sac development and the Vena development that's being proposed would eliminate our cul-de-sac and create a main road and throughway for use by the proposed 54 houses via a right-of-way that runs through our front yard. Our deed states that the right-of-way is to be used to access remaining Damaris land, which is the reference, which is the 24-acre parcel purchased by Navina. There is no intent to use the right-of-way to connect non-Damaris land to existing Damaris development, only to use it to access the back lot. Navina is certainly entitled to develop the 24 acres that they purchased. However, it should be built as an extension of Halflinger subdivision thus maintaining the clear intent in the original and amended plans to maintain Halfling as a cul-de-sac configuration, not a throughway. As the planning board, you are looked to to minimize the potential impacts from new subdivisions on the neighboring properties in the municipality. The proposed throughway would violate the intent of our deed, significantly increase traffic entering and exiting Halflinger, causing safety and traffic flow issues on an already dangerous area of Old Pine Hill, Sullivan Street, and Route 9. Additionally, it would adversely impact our property value and interfere, interfere with our quality of life with two plus years of continuous infrastructure construction, traffic, and noise. At one point, there had been reference to Dobson and Colonial Green developments. Both of those developments have two entrances and exits on streets substantially distant from each other. The proposal for this subdivision would have both entrances and exits within 100 yards of each other, also intersecting with Sullivan Street. The traffic impact, not to mention the impact on our schools, would further be exacerbated once development begins on large parcels on Pine Hill Road, Worcester Road, Old Sanford Road, and Diamond Hill. Our ask is simple. Please protect our property and the interests of us as residents and abutters. We bought on an approved cul-de-sac for privacy and quality of life. We ask that you work with Navina to identify an alternate plan for their development and a second entrance and exit, perhaps on Terry Road or Route 9. Seeking an alternative would preserve the intent of our deed, maintain the integrity of our development being a cul-de-sac, and minimize the traffic impact by eliminating the unintended throughway and dispersing traffic through two non-adjacent roads. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, should I anybody else? 
I received an email. I can read it. We are writing to you today to express our serious opposition to the proposed subdivision that has been delayed in the court. Although my family lives on Old Pine Hill Road, our home has a direct view of Halfinger Lane, the cows at 82 Old Pine Hill Road, and the beautiful space that lies between and beyond. We often watch deer graze in the empty fields that abut Halflinger and have become very familiar with the families of ducks and red-tailed hawks that make their home here. We love our green neighborhood and would hate to see it demolished in favor of cookie cutter, big town development. I do not believe that Old Pine Hill Road can handle the traffic that would come with an influx of new homes. We already see an excess of drivers speeding past our house, ignoring the stop sign at the end of Sullivan Street and showing little regard for pedestrians. As much as we enjoy going for walks in Penny Pond Trail, it's always nerve wracking to have to walk on Old Pine Hill Road, never knowing if drivers are going to be safe around our family. Products to improve drainage along the road have been installed, and I'm concerned that they will not be addressed before construction vehicles start using Old Pine Hill Road. We moved to Burrard five years ago in order to raise our family in a quiet, affordable town after being priced out of the rest of the seacoast. We were attracted to the small town field of Berwick, the land of beauty and the farming history of our neighborhood. Unfortunately, we see all those positive attributes disappearing and we will seriously consider relocating if we're surrounded by urban developments. All right. Anybody else with public comment? Yes. Hi, I, I didn't actually prepare anything, but I've been thinking about it a lot. I'm, I'm Sarah Ellis. I live on uh, Old Pine Hill Road at the corner of Halflinger. So I too am concerned about 54, 53 new houses going in with each house having probably two cars. That's 100 and, 106 new cars. And as, as Kim said, the entrances are only a couple of hundred yards apart. So it's that Old Pine Hill Road is going to have an awful lot more traffic if this goes in with this proposed number of lots. Um, I also was aware of the Damaris original proposal. And I know this is part of Damaris property with some other property put beside, beside it. The Damaris property, I have the original um, plots and they are putting more houses in than was originally ever planned with the Damaris property. So they're making the, the lots are smaller squeezing more things in, and that concerns me as well. Um, and then the other, my big request is that, I mean, there are a lot of beautiful trees on that property. And I would, if this goes ahead in, in any form, I hope that the, the, um, they will do their best to maintain the trees that are along property lines that will help us not have to see all these houses closed in together. So please keep as many trees as possible when you amend this in the best way that you can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no, no. My name is <clears throat> Alan Kravitz. My wife, Jane, and I uh, live at Four Half Lane. Um, and like everyone else said, you know, I bought the property as a cul-de-sac. I didn't, I did know that there was a right of way. Um, I do agree with Kim Jacks about, you know, the, the way it's going to be done and, and whatnot. Um, I do understand that Mr. Bardwell, you know, bought the property and he has to build on the property that he purchased. But 54 lots, that's, to me, that's crazy. And uh, connecting them to each other, bringing the two developments together. Again, what the other lady mentioned about the traffic. I walk every day on Pine Hill Road. I walk two miles a day. And I have to look out for my life crossing that road even on Sullivan Street, which is crazy. But um, the, the traffic impact that this is gonna have on that area really has to be thought about, um, especially, and I, I know they're gonna improve uh, Norman Court. Norman Court is a mess. 
I mean, having those brick columns at the end of the court, making the, the entrance narrow. I see trucks going up there, tandem trailer trucks. And I love watching them take that corner. I just can't wait to see one of those trucks bash those columns. <clears throat> just things like that. It's, it's, it's a very tight area. I know it's not congested, but it is tight. And if we put a little bit more thought into the impact of the area, the traffic impact, the safety impact, um, it would be to everyone's benefit and everyone would, would do well. The town would get more tax revenue. There'd be a beautiful development up there, but it's got to be thought about. My opinion, 54 is an awfully large number. So if someone could just put some thought to that and the, into the safety to a traffic impact. Uh, I, I realize that the, the Army Corps of Engineers has already looked into the wetlands, thank God, because it's pretty wet back there. <clears throat> um, and of course, we love our animals. And not the chipmunks, but all of us. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Okay. Thank you. Okay, right. so everybody else with anything else? My name is Wendy Lowell, 127, Old Pine Hill Road North. And never thought I would come to a town meeting and be able to say, sound like an old lady, say, I've been here for 20 years. <laughs> Uh, for some people in there, that's probably nothing, but um, as long as I've ever lived anywhere. And uh, this is going to um, echo what a lot of people have said, but in the 20 years that I have lived here, I have noticed that it is not the sun that wakes me up in the morning anymore. It's the sound of commuters. I know exactly when it is six o'clock, which is about the time I have to get up anyway. But there is a lot of traffic. They do go very fast. Um, and I understand, you know, it's kind of a shortcut to get from, uh, get over to Route 9. Uh, very often on Mondays, I have a lot of trash on my road because people are in a hurry to go to the dump and things just come out of their cars. It's not a big amount, but it's more and more all the time. So I, I am very concerned about such a large development that has the entrance and the egress in the same small road as the road. I don't. Um, I'm not necessarily pro-development, but I'm not here to say I don't want to see any development or any houses. I am concerned um, very much about the safety for egress and exits and remind you that that is right by our beautiful town library. So there's um, a need to be considerate about the families that are going through there. Um, I am also... Sarah talked about trees and this gentleman talked about animals. Um, it wasn't that long ago on Old Pine Hill Road that a developer bought a piece of property on, and um, had said that it was going to be uh, just two or three lots. Took down um, the first, he bought it as a resident, took down all the big pine trees in front, and then was able to get. Uh, easement and put in five houses, which was more than the lot should have had, but because I believe it's a 10 foot line separating the zoning from one side to the other, he was able to do that. It's a nice development and it's fine, but I'm feeling a sort of a bait and switch history here on the road, so I just like to mention that. Um, and anything that we can do that would be able to have the development have a separate entrance or egress uh, would be really, really helpful. If the road is getting noisy and um, it's, they just too fast. I don't know, you can't put speed bumps on it, but I think it's just something different. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else want to talk Thank you. Uh, Mary and I live at 1A Gate Lane, which is right on Old Pine Hill Road North, and just want to add my voice to the concern about the traffic. Um, I, too, am a walker. I see kids walking, families biking, and traffic rarely, you know, gives wide berth to you. They rarely slow down. I've had to jump into the, you know, 
ditch a few times just to get out of the way. And adding that many more vehicles up and down that road just really scares me. And I also, I don't know who does this, but I am concerned about the impact on our schools. I'm just leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else for public hearing? All right. If not, then we're going to move on to public comment for non agenda items, general planning items for Berwick residents and property owners. Anybody here for public comment? Anybody believe that? Um, so then on to approval of minutes. Does anyone find any issues with the minutes from last week? I see, I see no issues. I uh, would move to make a motion to move to approve. I'll second. All right. All right. So, here, hold on that. Or, no, right. Yeah, this is Oh, okay. All right. So, um, so, all those in favor? Yep. All right. Aye. All right. Aye. <laughs> all right. Um, then, on to old business. So, questions for the applicant? Uh, I didn't. I think I can address a couple of the concerns for schools. We do reach out, we will reach out to our superintendent to see what the capacities are. Uh, typically, it's elementary schools um, where the costs come from for school costs are when we come in, we have waves. So, I like to tell, tell folks we have 40 less kids in the school system now than 20 years ago when I was in high school. Um, it comes in bubbles and waves and where the costs come are when we have an influx of development and we have to expand and hire teachers and elementary school so the more we can keep that consistent um, the better so that's I, there's there's a ton of i can uh talk all day about school impacts so if there's more questions email me um in terms of traffic i think there's a lot of things that um, we could ask the developer to do um, to work on impacts for for safety, whether that's uh, and they, they will do a high level traffic analysis that will be part of their final plan. Um, and I would really encourage them to look at the Old Pine Hill Road north and south and School Street intersection. It's been a high crash location for 30 years, and I think I think there's some pretty low heavy lifts that can be done to make um, major safety improvements there. I know um, in terms of, I know the speed bumps have been brought up for within uh, the development. Um, what seems to work for the town are the speed bumps that are on Logan Street and the ones going to Memorial Field. So they're kind of more gradual humps. I mean, in terms of more improvements along Old Pine Hill Road. Um, Old Pine Hill Road, it's a collector street. So it's not a local street. It, it does connect Sullivan Street to Old Pine Hill Road. And that's that's not gonna, I mean, that's not gonna change. That's, it's a throughway and will remain a throughway, but getting a, a segment of sidewalk on there, a sidewalk is a good way to slow down traffic. There's other things too. There's um, narrowing the street with paint, or I know a stop sign has been brought up, maybe a three-way stop sign. That's more of a public works discussion. Um, that's something I'll bring up with our, our director. I can start those conversations. Um, uh, I'll just mention now in terms of the access of a half linger, the where the where the town stands on that from a legal perspective is that the um, what the applicant needs is just is, is prove a right title of interest to move forward, and they have that. Um, and what the town can do is condition our subdivision approval um, with a note that if there is a legal dispute in the judge <coughs> rules that no, they don't have the right to combine half of their normal court, then the note will say the subdivision will be null and void. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah. I think that's that kind of covers my. But, so that is the town's legal opinion? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I know that you're waiting for the final plan for your traffic analysis, but I did read um, from the Department of Agriculture that you guys had a few um, possibly somewhat endangered or special concern 
pieces for spice bush and spreading sedge that I asked you to do um, an appropriate survey sometime between May 31st and July 31st. So do you guys have plans for that? Yeah, go ahead. Um, at this, at this, oh, my name is Jay Stevens. I'm civil consultants. I'm obviously working with Mr. Bodwell on the Navina Estates project. Uh, with respect to the comments, like from the, uh, I think that was natural resources that was talking about those. Uh, we still have to go through the major DEP process, which is has asked for all of those same reports that you asked for in town, and we. We were pending getting through preliminary approval to submit it to the DEP. As it goes through the DEP process, they will ask some of the same questions. They will also tell us whether or not they think from their level that it needs to be looked at further. And if in fact they agree with that assessment that they would like us to look into it, even though there's no nothing that says there's anything there now, the DEP can require us to do that assessment to see if in fact something might be there. One of the things that they built, they, they're going to go through all of those different attachments that you have before you, uh, the, uh, some of the wildlife stuff regarding animals, rare and endangered species and so forth. They will decide if they think we need to do further study beyond what's already been done in the area. So we've, we've, we're sort of trying to straddle the, make the state happy, make the town happy, try and work with the abutters. Uh, so at this point in time, we have not scheduled anything for the uh, <coughs> because we want the rest of the DEP to come in and say what they want us to do. So if it can be combined, we can do it at the same time and we don't do something that doesn't make any sense. Okay. Um, if, if you want, I can address a couple of other comments that uh, James made. The traffic study, like you say, we, we've asked to put that off towards the final because, again, we want to get the DEP's take on what they think should be in the traffic study. Your ordinance is quite clear that we need to do a high level, he called it a high level study, but a more involved study than just a simple traffic count type of thing. And we intend to do that. We just want to be sure that, again, we cover what the DEP feels is important for the length of the study. We will obviously get with the town officials and probably James and the highway department both to verify the uh, crash data to be sure that we're doing the right length of the right portion of the street. Um, we can't do the whole town in our traffic study, but we can narrow it down to say from this intersection to that intersection is what's critical and then have that report give us suggestions on what to do, whether it's to put in, and I believe James is referring to a traffic uh, speed tables as opposed to speed bumps. The bumps, the abrupt thing, a speed table is more like a little platform that you slow down and go over. A lot of times you see those in your schools, um, but they're not so abrupt that they would break a car when you went over it. So all of those things are going to be looked at they have not been looked at yet. Again, trying to get more input from everybody to be sure we include everything that you want included. But that traffic study will include a study, uh, a get together with the town to be sure we've got their uh, section covered. Uh, part of the reason we're using the roads that we are and we haven't proposed any changes is because they're existing roads. It's not like we're trying to bring a brand new road in next to an old road and say, okay, now, oh, we've got 50 feet between the two and let's just go. Normally we would be farther apart, but these are existing roads. We're not trying to move anything. Mm -hmm. We're trying to work with, with what's out there. Uh, recognizing that the sidewalk is, is a concern. Um, it's not hard to, or it's not easy to see on the plans, but we do show on the plans connecting Hathlinger Lane to Norman Court, specifically getting to the library and putting a sidewalk on Old Pine Hill Road between those two, because if we're putting sidewalks on Norman Court, we're putting <clears throat> sidewalks on Hathlinger Lane, we understand putting the two together. Beyond that, we haven't looked into it because, I mean, the town may want sidewalks all the way down School Street. I don't think that's 
completely our requirement or something we should be doing, but we want to do improvements on Old Pine Mill Road to make it safer. Um, we just don't know what they all are yet because that's part of what the traffic study will come up with. I want to go back to your comment about the traffic study and and you did mention narrowing the focus on that and and i would counter just with an opinion um there's a there is a shortage of housing in the area based on the industrial activity the shipyard and some other issue you know employers in the area um <clears throat> it, it's going to have a profound effect not only in, in that one area but you you i don't think you want to be too narrowly focused um, and the only reason I say that I live on 236 and it's, it's the shipyard 500 twice a day. So you, you have to be aware of that. And I, and I just, I would caution you to not be too narrowly focused and I, I, just an opinion. I, I'm not providing direction, just it's some food for thought. No. And, and, <clears throat> and I, that's saying what I, what I was trying to say is we're not going to study the whole town. Gotcha. We're probably not going to include 236 because that's, Quite a ways away. Understood, but if this becomes an arterial to feed into that traffic every morning, it, it's it is a point for consideration. Well, and that's part of why we want the DEP's input into it because they talk to the DOT, so the DOT through the DEP will get involved. And, and like I say, we want to be sure we have the town officials who are familiar with that same data. Yes, sir. I, I believe the police department's also included to get an idea of crash and collision data and so yes, sir. forth. So. I didn't mean we're going to shrink it down to where we're only going to go from Hefflinger to Norman Court. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I just want to manage expectations on both ends. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. But, uh, you know, we're not going to try and do all of School Street and, and all those types of things because it just can be the what ifs never end if you get to And it, is a traffic study an independent contractor who who does that? And does do we have we, a stakeholder in that? Well, what we, what we will be doing is we will be getting a traffic consultant who does a lot of work with the DOT. Okay. Um, we have one that we work with who's been working on 236, Route 1 in York. That's who we're contemplating using at this point in time. Who's that? Oh, I used to work Where with... Where at the firm? No. Yeah, our firm. No. no. It, it's actually the guy who's doing it used to be with a local Portland company. Got upset with them. Uh, this unhappy with the people he's working with. He started his own company now and he's being supported out of, out of uh, a big DOT uh, group out of Connecticut. He's doing a lot of support and he's now a local office for them. Uh, he was recommended by people at Goral and Palmer who were too busy to do our original traffic work. And so that's what we're starting with them. And we've talked with him on this other project. He's very very good. I, I think you'll be happy with, with the study he comes up with. But like I say, we're trying to be sure that we include enough area, the right area, that, that's more important than anything. And so we were waiting for these types of comments before we come up with a contract with that. We do have a, we did have a traffic count done uh, for when last did it, his apartments. So we know uh, peak time, what the traffic roughly is i'll get you that okay that data, just so you can compare to what's being added you get that apples to apples comparison yeah. Yeah. if i could just add so i understand <clears throat> the um desire to want to do the input and output so close obviously it's financially smarter for you guys you're using existing roads um but seeing as they are being used to provide entrance to this development um, the public spaces here, are we giving the residents of these existing properties that you're using to get access? Are you giving them access to those public spaces or at least the public town access to those spaces? At this point in time, the way the project's planned, all of the open spaces that are shown will be open spaces to the people within the project. Okay, and we're not including these people that were part of the original Damaris development for that, correct? I, I believe we will because I think that the uh, the covenants that will carry through from their property will carry on to some of the dismarriage property, and then uh, uh, reading the covenants, we have the uh, the option to continue those covenants 
through the rest of the development. Okay, because so I'm, I'm hearing sure like a lot of concern about the trees and the wildlife. It's obviously part of their life to have that space back there. Um, so I don't know if that would be helpful to. And, open and, that and up. I have no problem if that isn't in some you know covenant. If okay. we have no problem making the covenant. So it, the new subdivision will have its own covenants, or will you guys be closely in alignment with the previous subdivision covenants? <laughs> I'm guessing that uh, it, we will, well, obviously we have to retain those for the right. current four. The new covenants will be closely aligned with those. Okay. If you look at our application on whichever page, it was, there's a page that talks about covenants. I think it's page three of the application. It says, what are the major of restrictive covenants placed in the deeds? If you read the list that's there, you'll find that almost mimics the current covenants to give you an idea, and it has been okay. finalized. Yeah. The intent was to follow as many of the existing ones as possible, maybe add a couple of new ones, but, but not to get rid of any of the ones that were substantial in that original set of governments. And this plan is to go over the course of three years, correct? Correct. 20 a year? Correct. Okay. So I know um, the rec department director, as I like to mention this, but she is very interested in preserving trees and making Berwick into a green town, which follows specific guidelines. Um, I don't know if we are following through with that, but I would definitely keep in contact with our rec director because when it comes to taking down all those trees in that area, um, we do want to have some type of a, I would hope, plan to replant or replant. Well, one of the goals, and it, it it's, is written into the plans, is that when an individual lot is developed, there to limit the clearing. I saw that, yeah. To, to just what would be see. for a driveway, a house, some space around the house, a small yard. No, no clear cutting of a lot would be used. The other thing that comes into play, and again, it's part of the stormwater and erosion control and so forth, is the DEP has a lot of buffer requirements that you cannot do anything in those buffer zones. And if you look on the plans and into some of the very detailed sheets, you'll see buffers all over the place, especially adjacent to the wetlands. There might be a 7,500 foot buffer from the wetland that will be undisturbed. So the, like I say, the goal is to not take down anything we don't have to take down for a road, uh, there actually are going to be a few stormwater infiltration ponds that will obviously have to be cut to make it into a, a pond, you know, whether it's the size of this room or twice the size of this room, to address other types of issues. But the ponds may turn into wetlands by the time they're done. And there's nothing that says they can't have stuff going up and through those. But there is no intent to clear cut the way. And I admit I've seen other projects where they do. They come in, cut every tree down. Now oh, it's easy to work. Les has already made a commitment that he's going to try and work in between the trees, which is going to take extra effort on his part. But that—that that is the intent. The only other issue I see, and just out of concern, because I'm not familiar with the scale on here, but as I look at Teardrop Court and then the Halflinger Lane extension, um, at the end of each of those extensions, you have a cul-de-sac and it, it appears you have four abutting properties on each cul-de-sac. Um, you know, we made a huge investment in our fire department and fire apparatus. It, 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 does that have a certain, a radius sufficient to allow a large firefighter apparatus to get, to get through yes. there? It does. The, okay. the radius is definitely are big enough for, for dry fire trucks okay. in this, the way it's going. The okay. other thing that I'm not sure all the members of the planning board are aware of, but in, in this town, the town refuses to take over cul-de-sacs now. Right. So. But we still have to go and put out a fire if there's yeah, a fire. Right. <laughs> but I mean, the ownership of these two little cul-de-sacs is going to be private ownership of the people that are on those cul-de-sacs. It's mm -hmm. not going to be the town's responsibility to plow them and things like that. Uh, the fire is department Is that through has, HOA, HOA funds or how how is that handled? Mm -hmm. I believe so, yeah. HOA, all right. That's definitely his area. I got gotcha. you. Actually, a planned unit development. Well, that would be a PUD. Right. And this this probably doesn't qualify as a PUD, but it, it's close. Right. I mean, it's, it's definitely you know, a planned setup. A PUD is usually even, you know, people have commented on how small the lots are. 
if it was a bud, they'd be even smaller. Right. Right. Um, so I mean, we're we're trying to find the spot between. So as small. And my comment here is, um, I guess it's more global. It, it, is that you know we're talking about traffic, we're talking about wildlife, we're talking about storm water, we're talking about uh, wetlands, we're talking about environmental impacts and all those sort of things. And I think the one thing to mitigate a lot of this is to not do 53 lots, uh, at least not all at once, but to do it maybe in stages or sections or pieces so that what you really do is say, okay, here's my, what my infrastructure has to cost. And I know that you had talked about infrastructure earlier today, uh, that that maybe what we do is, I, I don't have to do all that infrastructure because I'm not going to develop that right now, but I'm going to do this section here, which is easier to develop right now and just get that done. And then I'm going to come back with my next stage and next stage. Uh, I, I think that mitigates a lot of, the issues that you have with the abutters and, and people living in the community. And it also gives us an ability as a town to see what impact just those houses have on that area before you know we start uh, rolling the rest out. Now, I know that's not, not ideal for a developer, uh, but it certainly seems to be a middle ground for getting this underway and yet uh, allowing uh, some of some of the concerns of those people who are in the neighborhood. Just a thought. You don't have to comment if you don't want to. No, I'd like to. Uh, what you say makes perfect sense and that is our plan uh, for multiple reasons. One, uh, we're only allowed to build 20 lots in a subdivision per year. So that limits us to the number of lots. So we will phase this at least three phases. That also does two other things. One, it also, uh, oh, yeah. sorry. Oh, I think to be on video. Sorry, I should introduce myself to my name is Les Bardwell, I'm the owner of uh, the United States. So, um, so to answer your question, the uh, this will be done in three phases, minimum of three phases. Those phases may be 20, 20, and 13, or they may be, they may stretch out uh, and do less lots than that. It's going to determine a few things. One is when we put the first 20 in, um, what's the absorption rate? So, you know, what is the demand for housing? Right now, it's incredible. Uh, next year, is it going to continue to be incredible? I don't know, you know, so, so at the very least, it will be phased into three phases as a minimum. So, uh, and that is actually ideal for a developer because uh, to put in 53 lots, uh, it's a huge undertaking. It's a huge amount of money. It's a huge risk. So as a developer, it actually minimizes our risk to do 20 lots. See how the town takes it, how it goes, right? So I, I think, you know, part of what I'm saying is I understand that that you can't do them all at once. And, and uh, but if we skinny down the the plan to say, OK, approve the first 20 lots and let's see how that goes and see what impact it has and that sort of thing before we then approve the next 20 lots or the next 13 lots or what have you. Uh, I think that allows for us to get our arms around as uh, as neighbors and, and, and people living in this town, uh, what those impacts really are. And because right now we can do all the studies in the world, but we really don't know what the impact's gonna be. And the impact for someone living on Old Pine Hill Road is gonna be different than someone living right off School Street, which is different than someone who's living in the development. So uh, we don't know what that is and what those things are. And I would really like to see um, a plan that says, we're coming to you asking for 20 houses and here, here's, they, here's where they are and here's what we're gonna do in, in that area. And then when at some point in time uh, during that construction, you're developing your next plan for the next phase. And I think that could do, sorry. Go ahead, I'm sorry. 
Um, I feel like that can do nothing too, but build confidence because we're talking about if you do continue past the three years, now we're looking at five, six, seven years of these residents having to worry about the construction vehicles coming in and out of these two entry points here. Um, so yeah, I love, do love that idea, Paul, um, of just starting with that first year's plan if possible. Um, but I don't know if that's something that we don't know if it's economical. I, I, I know the, the, the cost of building materials is sky high right now. The availability of construction workers themselves to actually build the houses is, uh, is a challenge. Uh, so, uh, and, and delivery times for specialty materials like sliding and roofing and that sort of thing are difficult. Uh, so it's, it's, all, it's a tough situation right now. Hope it gets better. Um, not so sure it will anytime very soon, but I, I just like to throw in two comments. I mean, I like what you're saying, but there's a couple of hard realities that jump in at the same time. In order for some of this to work, obviously there are utilities involved. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. water department has no problem if the water all gets put in. If it doesn't all get put in, there's not enough interconnect between pipes to maintain pr proper pressure and so forth, which means the fire hydrants may or may not work. So you can't put in part of the water without putting in the rest of the water. Mm -hmm. If you say after the first 20 lots, oh, we don't want to go any further. Well, now the rest of the water doesn't get put in and you'll never get the water supply that you would have to have. So that's one small problem. The second one is the town has requirements that, that you can have a dead end road with more than, I think it's 50. 20. Is it 20? It's 20, yeah. But there's a maximum number of lots. So suddenly, maybe the first one puts in all the houses you could possibly build, or maybe it doesn't get, I thought it was 15, in which case you couldn't get enough built on another the road and part of our road is also a limit on how long it can be for a dead end road. Mm -hmm. And if you've been out, if you remember the first site walk, and even if you look at the plans, going in Hefflinger, you go a long ways before you can get to the first lot because of all the wetlands, mm -hmm. the existing lot that you've got to go past and things like that. So you're going to build you know, a thousand feet of road and have no houses on it, which is, is fine. It's a nice road, doesn't cost much to take care of, but there's no return to now build the houses because you put everything into the road and you're not allowed to put any houses on it. So that gets in the way. The state has a requirement that if you're going to have more than one phase, they have to approve it all. No ifs, ands, or buts. They approve the whole thing. They, they will give you the ability to do it in phases but they must approve the whole thing at one time. You can't do it, then come in next, next month and say, oh, now we want to do another 20. That's just their process does not allow that. If you know you're going to have 60 or in this case, 53 in the total thing, you must bring in the 53 now, which again, you're going to put all the money into the design and pay for everything, but you get no return because you don't know when you're ever going to get the whole thing back. But you're still doing it in three phases, correct? But they That's the plan. actually do the work in three phases. Okay. But again, they want to guarantee that the three phases are going to be built. You know, yes, you can build this one. By the way, you've got extra more years before you better have the second one built or right. you know, whatever time frame you give them to do it. In. So just thinking outside the box, you know, may, maybe there's a compromise here with where, where we can meet everybody's needs and obviously contingent on the environmental impact study, the traffic study, everything else. But what if just, just thinking out loud, looking at your, your site plan. If you look at uh, the backside of the development on Halfinger Lane and Halfinger Lane Extension, there are 20 parcels that, that align that part of the road. Would you guys be amenable at all to maybe developing those first 20 first? Yeah, and that, you can't do that. You can't do that. Okay. And the only reason I say it gives a, a little time and distance for the residents oh, who are already there. To do that. Yep. But the reason we can't do that is we're limited to the number of houses on a, on a dead end road. I gotcha. So okay. You can't put 20 when there's already four there. 
I gotcha. If that were an option, that is the option we would take because right. that's where the pumping station goes. So, okay. you know, it's would be more economical and less costly for us to put all of them in right there. Right. Fortunately, we can. So what is your plan if you if you get approval tomorrow and you're going to go and you're going to build your first 20, where, where are those at? Can you? It's going to be a mix of Halflinger and Norman Court. Okay. So both both of those roads, the first you know section of Norman Court, I don't know exactly where the breakdown is. That's right. something that Jay and I will work out. But yep. you know, some lots will be on Norman Court, some lots will be on Halflinger. So given that, it, looking at the map, is there any way to stagger but but start at the far end of the property and, and work your way back? Is that it's not feasible? Okay. All right. And just refresh my memory. You guys said you are actively looking for other outputs. <clears throat> yes. Okay. So you have a somebody that's looking for. Is that in the form of right of ways? Or are you looking to procure more land? I've, or? I've had conversations with two other abutters about okay. getting another access point out on Route Nine. Okay. So that we don't have to cross those wetlands. But at, the, at this point, nothing has come to fruition. And it's not 100% true. We still would have to cross some wetlands, but it would be less wetlands. Would know, you mentioned a, it's expensive. A shorter crossing, yeah. that would be ideal. Yeah. And, that, and that's what we're looking at. Right now, we're looking at a fairly long one, the way mm -hmm. the property goes. Mm -hmm. Anything else? So forgive me if this has already been asked. Hi, Les. How are you? Yeah. Um, so do you know what um, specific lot numbers are in your first 20? Because I can see the plan, but do you know which one, which lots you're going to build on first? No. You don't know yet. Okay. That's something you might be able to narrow down. I, I just think. I'm sure we can. Yeah. yeah I, I just think that might make it more palatable, you know, for. It. Yeah, I'm sure Jane and I can sit down and look at you know, where's the pumping station, what gets us there. And then there's, there's an interesting crossover from the pumping station over to Norman Court. Where is the pumping station located? Pumping station is up on Halflinger, uh, just past the first road, I believe, or somewhere where the first road is. Looking at like lots 47 and 38. Can I come up? With yeah, please, one? please, sir. <laughs> it might be helpful helpful if you guys could take the plan and um, once you figure out which 20 you're going to start with less, maybe just highlight them on the plan so people can see it and so it a little better. Contingent on the pumping station is my understanding. Okay. It would be this guy. Okay. So that is to provide boost pressure for this area. Oh, this is for the sewer. Oh, for the sewer. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So everything ultimately goes to there. Okay. And gets pumped up. I gotcha. Area. Okay. I mean, I, I think my suspicion is that we're going to get as many house lots on Halflinger as we're allowed, with the exception of whatever that first uh, string of houses on one side of Norman Court are. I don't remember if it's five or six. Yep. I see the five on the. Maybe those thing. five and then 15 on Halflinger. Uh, is, is that, and that's so the first the, five on Norman Court, those are going to be the first ones going in. I think so. Okay. Well, I don't know if they'll be the first ones, but those will be part of the first phase. Okay. I believe is what we had discussed. Okay. Uh, getting those five in and fifteen on half layer. But again, I'll, I'll discuss it with Jay, and we'll we'll come up with what you know actually really makes sense, and uh, we can get a highlighted version to you pretty easy. If you guys could come up with a phased plan, I think that would it does two things. It gives you know the, the town a, a peace of mind of where the project's going, what the impact will be over the phased building cycle. I think that would be helpful. Okay. I, I'm not in a position to provide direction, it's just recommendation. Yeah. Well, there, there, there is potentially an advantage to doing the phasing because at some point the town's gonna want to bond for the work that's to be done. Right. If it's broken down in phases, he would only bond for the phase that's being constructed. After it's built, then you either transfer the bond to the next phase or take that one back and if it can be a smaller bond, you get a smaller bond. But you wouldn't bond for the entire project because you can't physically do that all in one sit down. But if you did it in phases, you've now got a, a 
chunk that you can now work with. This is how much has to, how much water has to be put in before you get all your money back. This is how much, and so forth. Right. And it it does help protect everybody, and it does give even the neighbors a a sense of well, this we're not going to see the construction first because it's going to be here first type of thing. Right. Right. And as the plan, just thinking from a, a, an impact standpoint, you know, if you buy a house and, and granted, it, you know, it was known that the right of way existed. I get that. But is there a plan to utilize maybe one road more than the other? I, I mean, nobody, nobody wants construction equipment rolling through their front yard. I, I get that. And it, but is there any provision that you might use Norman Court over Halflinger instead of using both? There's, there's no there's no provision for sure. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, if you live on Norman Court, it's unlikely you're going to drive up the street the wrong way and around the corner and back around the corner to water half like Right. So I, I guess my, my bigger concern is during happen. during the construction. Or are you is it is it your intent to use both or or would you consider using one as a construction entrance and not use the other? That that's the question. I, you know, I would consider a construction entrance for sure. I mean we're going to kick the can down the road a little bit and right. make Halflinger happy and yep. Norman Court upset. Right. But I, I just, but, but just trying I, but to see I what, also, what, what's I see a, your point because, you know, Halflinger is a, a you know, well-constructed subdivision with a nice road. Norman Court is not, uh, as a, you know, should have been replaced, you know, some years ago. So, that road uh, would suffer less from us pounding on it. Right. Especially with the ongoing duration of the project where we don't really know the end. Yeah, and I don't yeah. think it matters to us, you know, which which side the dump trucks come in. I mean, I think that one of the things uh, after looking at the engineering, I think that we have a pretty balanced site. So I think that, you know, there'll, there'll be some initial trucking for us to get piles in there, but then I don't, there's not gonna be heavy trucks coming in and out for a year. I mean, we're gonna get all of our material for phase one in there in a short period of time. And then we're gonna have, you know, rock trucks bringing it from the pile to wherever it needs to go. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our, our objective is to minimize that traffic, you know, just Absolutely. because trucking is expensive. And Absolutely, yeah. Get it all in there at once and, and then we're just moving it on site. Okay. So it sounds like we have just some outline questions for as far as traffic flow, some environmental things. Um, and we're going to obviously put a condition to have this approval when it is approved, be null and void should any civil things happen with that right away. Um, so we're not agreeing to approve anything, is that correct? So that would be uh, up preliminary plan approval. Oh. I think. What would make sense is to work some preliminary plan conditions. So we'll meet back on the 17th, we'll have everything ready and up front to be able to vote for it. And for preliminary approval for the 17th. So that should we? And that just, and that just it goes um, sketch phase one, preliminaries two, and then final would, would be months from now after. Typically, fun though. What we what we anticipated was that after preliminary, we're now waiting more for DEP. Yeah, that's the biggest right. single thing to wait for. You got through the Army Corps hurdle though, so that's and that's that's that's, that's going the big one at the same time. Oh, that's not approved. Oh no, we haven't got to the end of that. Okay, one. all right. We're still okay. tweaking wetland impacts. Okay, with them. So I mean, it, it's a little bit of everything. Gotcha. Um, but the preliminary approval. You know, obviously, if the DEP comes back and says we want some changes, we're hoping that they would be minor. Right. In which case, it, it's not a big change between preliminary and final. The only thing that usually happens is by the time you get done making everybody else happy, you might lose another lot or two. Right. Because that's usually how things end up. You know, they want a little more wetland saved, or they want a little more area for the natural uh, wildlife potential type of thing. But, uh, at this point, when we started the paperwork for the application, we had 54 lots, but as you can see on the plan, we're already down to 53. We lost one between starting the paperwork and getting it submitted. And that type of thing could happen. Minor tweaks in the road to miss a wetland. But again, that's not a substantive change. 
Say again, I'm sorry. Or a beech tree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've already moved a couple of times for a, okay. for a beach. I thought it was a beach. Oh, okay. now a couple of, couple of real beautiful big beech trees out there. You just don't see them that big, that healthy, you know, so. Right. Uh, so, I mean, we have been moving things for that type of thing. Yeah. Uh, so would you guys be amenable for the next um, pre-approval to, to come up with a, one, a traffic plan and two, uh, more detail on the on the phased development like which would you be able to is it too early for you guys to commit to say these would be the 20 that would be first developed is that i think that's easy enough i, I just think that might be a little more I think that's easy easier enough. to that, digest you know, for for the community that's just picking out you know which lots we do and i, I think i'm already pretty set on what those lots are right i just need jay to tell me that you know, yeah, or no, or that we can make it work. That we can make it work. And for, okay. for final plan, what I'd like to see, I'd like to see a plan for the old Pine Hill Road intersection. I think that'd be a big win win for everybody. And then have the final plan implement the traffic study recommendations for the plan. Road. You mean like new stop signs or something? Stop signs, speed bumps, slow um, down signs. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your speed. I think, I mean, I think. One thing you could do is look at doing a bump out the crosswalk to the library, stuff like that. Streetscaping that helps calm the traffic. And you want that before the preliminary, or that would be no, I, I think that'd be okay to be if you have it ready for final, final, but to okay. have the recommendations already integrated in the plan and when you're back to final, but right on the final plan. Yes, that would be then. Yeah. When you mentioned traffic for the next meeting, you were talking the construction traffic plan. Correct. That's that was my concern because I, I think it, if you hit both of those roads with heavy equipment, uh, you know, right out of the gate, I, I, I think it's going to turn a lot of people off. And I, it, this is a, this is a, I think it's a difficult situation for all involved. I mean, I understand the need the need to development the the need to increase our tax base. All of that is is worthy stuff, but at the same time, um, how, how how do we make it palatable, and how how do we be good stewards to the people who already own there? And that yeah, and that's and, that's and, the and rub. I think, you know, from my perspective, if you uh, if you actually walk the land, my plan already was to stockpile at the end of North Port. Mm -hmm. So it's not. I mean, just based on the topography. I mean, you know, we got the wetlands to cross on Halflinger, right? And then we have lots immediately. Yep. So at the end of Norman Court, if we put the first five in, then we have all of that space at the end of Norman Court, rough the road in over to uh, to Halfland there. And it was always my plan to stockpile uh, material there anyway. So gotcha. I, I, like I said, nobody likes big equipment moving through their front yard. I, I get it. I, I completely understand that. <clears throat> and I think just the open spaces also being public access, being accessible to the town. Might be something that we're hoping to see as well. Okay, now that that's something obviously <laughs> less has to get into. It's, okay. it's my understanding, and I was not at any meeting prior. Well, I think I listened to last month's or the last meeting. Yeah. Prior to that, as I understand it, the members of the board at the time, and I don't know who was on it at that point, felt that there were enough public access areas in the area that none of these had to be. So we did not propose any of that. Way. Well, if we're just looking at like, you know, goodwill and everything going into the community, we have right behind the, the two that have been the most vocal about, you know, missing this area, missing that environment. That is their backyard, <laughs> the open space. So I think it would definitely show some goodwill to leave that public at least to the abutters. At the very least, but ideally to the town, since you're bringing so much. Well, that's that's newness. two things, and I think that you're. I think that you have a good concept, but I think that you're creating a bad concept, because if you're saying leave this open space for the abutters, right, because it's their backyard, and then you're saying open up to the public. That's that's conflicting ideas. Um, I'm not opposed to opening up to the public, but I don't, I don't know what the legality of that is, and I don't. I know that I tried building a park in exchange for the town maintaining it the town wouldn't maintain it mm -hmm. so i was like i'll build a beautiful park you guys just mow it nope. so turning it over to the town i don't know where that falls into um but i think that you know it's going to be a buffer zone it's going to be kept 
and if it's part of the subdivision and people in a subdivision have access to it, then those abutters Aren't certainly sure. have all the access that they need to it. Oh, okay, so they are included. The abutters are. Yeah, the abutters. Okay, yeah. okay. that's what I want to know. Are the original subdivision people included? But I mean, public, public, yes. I mean, the best solution, it seems like, would be for their. Yeah, you know, and I think <laughs> that we actually talked about putting some walking trails through. Mm -hmm. some of these open spaces to connect in some of the roads mm -hmm. so people could just walk through road you know from the sidewalk through the the trail and uh, mm -hmm. you know so so certainly all of my properties like that i have a property on pine hill road i mean uh, cemetery road and i have 25 acres out there and everyone in the area knows that they're welcome to use it in the situation with your apartments it was property you own and the town maintained we said no to that whether we take ownership of the eight acre. I don't know if that makes sense. Something we can think about, but if the homeowner, home, because if the homeowners association owns it, they'd be responsible for maintaining it. But it might be, it'd be nice to say the general public can use it, but it's up to the homeowners association to say, all right, this isn't being used and they can they can decide what they want to do with it. And that's really all we could ask. Yeah. Unless the town owns, unless the town decides that we want to own it, we can't expect someone else to maintain. I think else. that we just put it in the covenant that you know it's, it's for use of anyone in the subdivision, and then if they all get together and decide at some point that they want to turn over to the town, or, or fairy shrimp, then you know, that's it. And you guys have draft covenants for the new development as of yet, or the new draft covenants have not been put together. Okay. Again, hearing what people. Would absolutely yeah you can't put the cart before the horse i guess right it, it becomes yeah. hard because we absolutely right, we anticipate a number of things but you yep. can't anticipate everything okay but I, I would like to know what you would like before the next meeting and the, the only two things i'm really positive on is a construction traffic plan and a phasing plan and i and the phasing plan would show that the initial group, but it would also so show the next phase one. Because if you're going to do a basic plan, you might as well do all the phases. A absolutely, I, I think that would be helpful. And I think we also want to see in writing that the current um, members of the development will have access to the public space as well, in some form, just for the the people that are here in this room. I'm not sure. I mean, we could probably provide something. I think by the nature of it being public it's access, access. Mm -hmm. they have access to it. No, what she's saying is the, the four lots that are currently in the original yeah, Miss have access to the same open space that all of the new lots have. That's, yeah, that's what you're talking about. Okay. All right. Um, we have public comments uh, after the new business, so you can go back. Um, all right. So is there anything else? Any other questions for the applicant? I'm good, finally. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Right. So, so, the, just a point of order. So the public hearings closed. Oh, there's public right. comments for non-agenda items. So if there's other comments, you can email me. But oh, this okay. this section, the Navina Acres subdivision, that's done for the evening. Oh, so anyone that's here for that can, can go. Um, okay. I don't, but I'm easy yeah, to find. I'm yeah, planning at Burrow Green on the work. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now on to new business. Very patient new business. <laughs> Dustin, you guys are up. I can. So this is a, a tremendously finer. Thank you. In the scope of things, much more minor than what we just heard. Uh, Dust can probably explain it better than me, but it's essentially it's uh, two approved subdivisions, and they're doing a lot line adjustment. And there's, no create, there's no additional create a lot. So I'll turn over to Dust. Dust Morrow, Sidewater Engineer in Terrain. Um, previously, we had done a subdivision in the yellow here, uh, CF Investments. Uh, and this was that area was part of that sub that lot number two. And then we did a subdivision over at Alley's Wag subdivision, um, a budding lot owned by uh, 
Curtis Land Development, and Nick Curtis owns a lot over there. Um, so we're just proposing a lot line adjustment we need to do of 4.32 acres. Start creating any new lots, no road. Our lots are still conforming with square feet and setbacks and wetlands and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much just hoping to get this recorded in the registry and go with the description. So I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. I'm sorry, shifting gears from the last one. Yeah. You're not adding any new lots. Nope. It, you're not, it doesn't change any of the zoning. Nope. So what, what are we changing exactly? Uh, Again, I'm sorry. We approved subdivision in yellow. Okay. And this was part of it. Yep. And then we approved the subdivision in green. Okay. And it's just a lot line adjustment between the two. Getting rid of this line here and putting it over there. So this hatched area is going to go to green. I got gotcha. you. And that is all surveys done yeah 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 okay. it's all been surveyed and, and it's, it's all like conforming a, what's that and it's all conforming, all conforming. It's all conforming. okay yeah no new roads no new okay. lots uh, just swapping okay. 4.3 find the application complete and approve the application all yeah. right I find the application <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, all right. So who wants to make i move that we find the application complete For, i second all right so all in favor aye um, um, I do have plans to get signed. Yep. I was told that the registry is not taking plan size plans. They're taking 11 by 17 only. I don't know if that's accurate, but we'll I'll, sign them. I'll, I'll leave these with you. Yeah. And we'll find out and just have them sign them. Now's the time to have them signed. So. Okay. Yep. But yeah, they have to prove it first. Oh, we just. We did. We just did. You had found the application complete, right? Yeah. Yes. Now, now I make a motion to approve. Second. <laughs> all right. All in favor. Aye. 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 Sorry to me to steal your thunder. Yeah, now, now it's time. <laughs> Much easier for me. <laughs> I can wait. Sorry. Yes. All right. Do we, yeah. yeah. we all yeah, sign? Go first. We all sign. Would have been nice one at first. <laughs> We're a little nice bit more to about uh, <laughs> Nippy and the Anchor. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for coming at us with something easy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, James. Yeah. Yep. James. Yes. You're from home. Have the um, next time have somebody speak at the podium into the microphone because you guys just approved something that I have no idea what was approved because I couldn't hear him talking. Oh, he was at the podium. Yeah, he was at it. Are we on mute? But he wasn't talking into the microphone. You're on mute again. Oh, he was at the podium. She's just not on camera. I know, but every time he would bring his face away from the microphone because he's so soft spoken, we couldn't hear him. Who's better next time? You need to clip on Mike so that he built the podium, maybe <laughs> after COVID days. All right, now on to uh, the 106 through 286 uh, site plan amendment. <laughs> You're back. <laughs> Thank you. Which one is that, James? That is the uh, IRA Metal 106 These are middle packages. Yeah, right here. Thank you. Get back on the right sidewalk. Nope. Yeah, no. On the Tidewater. Okay. No, that's Tidewater. Okay. Yep, that one. Yep. All right. I can do a quick one. This is another. Um, very minor. They they are adding a stormwater feature to an existing stormwater feature. So they are all they're doing is improving the drainage on their site by adding a to a grass biofilter. Is that right? Essentially correct. Yeah, uh, you can take it away. Okay. Good. Good evening. My name is Jay Stevens. I'm a civil consultants, and I'm working with Burwick Iron Metal to uh, modify their approved site to add additional treatment to what's already there. If you look at the site plan that's part of your packet, it's sheet uh, EC1. 
and I, and I apologize if you see this far, but if you look sort of in the center of the page, that's where there are metal shredder and a lot of the recycling occurs. Uh, the, the metal uh, cars are shredded, the components go up the conveyor, they get sorted by magnets, all kind of other fancy doodads to uh, into different piles for separating the materials that are metal versus the stuff that's non-ferrous and then the stuff that's just other, other types of materials. And if you look immediately to the right of that, you'll see what looks like a little teardrop. Right now, all of the area that's the recycling part all of the stormwater, rainwater, anything wash water in that area is directed into that little teardrop area where it goes through a sand filter to filter out impurities, hydrocarbons, metals, you name it. It takes all kinds of stuff out and it works great. Um, as part of their DEP permit, they're doing annual uh, multi tests every year, between two and four every year of all the components that come out. They check in the river to be sure that everything in the river is cleaner than what's coming out of the site type of thing. But everything on the remainder of the site bypasses this treatment. It goes into a detention pond down here on the bottom. The detention pond Literally, when it fills up, the water sits there until the water drains out. But it's not filtered out, it just sort of settles. So if you test the outlet from that, it has items that we prefer weren't out there. They are not a problem because again, the TEP looks at these reports every time they come out and they, what they keep saying is we would like you to do better. We have come up with a sand filter similar to that first one that will do better. It will take that effluent that's currently coming out, run it through a sand filter, and when it comes out of the sand filter, it should be as good as what's coming out of the existing sand filter. Problem is, to put that in, we have to cut down a few trees to make that pond for the sand filter. And the original approval for this project says if we want to cut down any trees, we have to come back to the planning board. Literally, that's the only reason we're here. If we could have done it without putting the trees down, we would have put it in by hand. So, <laughs> so we're here asking your permission to improve what's there. The state has not said we had to, but we've been telling the state, uh, Rob, who's been working on the metals, been telling the state for years, we'll do everything we can to make things better. We just need everybody's permission to do it. And so that's what we're looking for is permission to put in this extra sand filter. And that's what the second uh, big page is. And it shows you all the details of the, the way that sand filter is going to be built, the materials that are going in it. It's smaller than the current one, but it's sized for the volume of water that's going through that area. And that, that's the goal. What's the uh, time duration for getting this done from start to finish? Is it so long? Long deal. Well, I guess it depends on. Uh, Technically, you have to come here to talk to Hello, my brother. Okay, I'm metal. So, yeah, as far as the timeline goes, I'd like to think we could get it in before winter this year. Okay. Uh, you know, the only thing that's going to hold that up is get someone in to do it. You know, it's a little difficult now. Yeah. That would be going to hold me up. Other than that, um, it's no big deal. So, it, my my <clears throat> my question wasn't just you know general knowledge, but if we're in the middle of doing that, what happens to that that effluent in the meantime? In the meantime, I mean, where's that going? It, it's going down. It's going down to the uh, Worcester Brook the way it does right now. Okay, but I mean, if you're in the middle of construction or well, it digging, change anything because we're adding. What, what we're doing is, is there's 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 a little pond right now, right, which has these oil water separators and all this other stuff in front of it. So basically, that continues to work. 
we add the sand filter in front of it, and then we simply switch it over. Okay. All right. I got you. So, so you'll divert it into the new into the new stuff. Right. I got you. Exactly. Okay. So basically, that's all we're doing. It's almost like I, I, I'm just trying to see on this map. I'm assuming that Salmon Falls River is down here somewhere. Am I correct? Salmon Falls assumption? is down there. Correct. Okay. So that this feeds into the Salmon Falls. Correct. Okay. Yeah, well, okay. All right. We go into Westerbrook, and Westerbrook goes into Salmon Falls. Is that where the EPA is taking their testing out of the out of the brook, or are they taking their testing out of the river? Well, let me. Again, just to make it easy for everybody. Yes, sir. It's just right a now, small print. We test the outlet here. Let's see. Where's my phone? Okay, we have an outlet here. We have an outlet here. Okay. We test the river up here before these get into the river. Okay. And down here after where they would dump in. All of our testing to date for the last... Eight years. Years, I think it's a long it's time. Yeah, yeah, the river has never shown an impact from what's coming out. Okay. But again, if you test right there, they have what they call uh, indicator tests. Mm -hmm. If your turbidity, if it looks too cloudy, right. then we think it should be cleaner. Well, the way we're doing it, we can't make it cleaner because it, it, it is going to be cloudy. Gotcha. But this sand filter lets it sit settle out and what comes out underneath the pipe isn't true anymore okay so we're making it better by what we're doing so that when we test these locations in the future that will be at the outlet of this new sand filter gotcha and we can sit there and say hey we're not doing anything I, so I, I want, is it am i correct in my assumption that it, it it's uh Undeveloped land between there and the CMP easement. That's all undeveloped. Correct. Okay. And then there's no residential or anything else between there and the Salmon Falls River. Is no, that it? It goes from the CMP to the uh, the Berwick Water Berwick District. The, the water or the sewer district. Sewer okay. District. Okay. In they're fact, all and they're all downhill from you. They are yes. They, okay. They are downhill. And there's no residential is, stuff back there and no plans for any residential no, we stuff don't back have there. Property, right? Oh, you do. Okay. All right. Now, the, the interesting part is that the part that we're putting this on was purchased from the sewer district. Oh, well. So, I mean, right. it works out great. I just have one informational question to ask, and that's, you're here because it's a requirement because you have to take down trees, and that was in the original uh, approval. Mm -hmm. Why was that in the original approval? Well, so that we just don't whack down all the trees and make the thing huge after we get an approval. You know what I'm saying? So we don't make the actual area where we process material. Right. Are it, you doing that now? Right. Are you we're, taking down a million trees now? No. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So we're just taking down trees to put more filtration. We're not taking down trees to make a processing area. Right. To make it a bigger plant. To make it a bigger right. operation. Right. So impact-wise, how many trees are we talking here? Do you do you have a Two guesstimate? So you're trying, uh, so no, I, I, I mean, was, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> are we talking acreage? We talking? Oh, you're talking what? Maybe 20 trees? Oh. oh, we probably got more than 20 trees. I mean, it but depends what they are you know. so far back. You can't even see this site from anywhere that an abutter is. Gotcha. I mean, okay. that, that's the advantage of where we that's are. Okay. We're way out in the back to start with. And unless you're coming down the CMP easement, you won't even see this. Well, I think CMP took a lot of the trees out. So well, yeah. the trees are really <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Right. There, is, there, isn't, right. there isn't that many left because they took them all up. We bought the property all the way up to I, the CMP easement. Do they have to? <laughs> yeah. They got to do all the work. <laughs> all right. I, I see no all reason right. to not. Yeah. I, I, I move to approve. Yeah. All right, so the complete. Yeah. Oh, I gotcha. So I move that we find the application complete. I second. Perfect. All in favor? Aye. 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 And to approve. I move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, guys. Have a good evening. You too. Thanks for your patience tonight. <laughs> Very good day. Thank you. Pleasure meeting all of you. We have uh, 
we have the now you guys are for free code. <laughs> we have the engineer in the uh, on Zoom here. So this is a uh, subdivision amendment. It's the creation of one lot um, at the end of a cul-de-sac. Want to fill in on any more? Or have, our, have your engineer go for it. Yeah. Well, it's a uh, it's a twenty-eight fossil. Okay. It's in my subdivision. Uh, in two thousand and fourteen, the twenty-eight fossil was in tree growth. So I came before the town. I took two and a half acres out of tree growth, paid the penalty. And built my house there. So that leaves 17 and a half acres, more or less. I'm still in tree growth, but it's still a good piece of land. So my son decides that he wants to build a house. So I said, well, why don't we divide this lot? You can build there, and then you, you can become the new steward of the tree growth. Plan. I had just had a new tree growth plan done in January for 10 years. Every 10 years, they, they have to be redone, the tree growth plan. So that's my second one. I've owned the property for over 18 years. And I built that subdivision. So I thought it'd be a great thing to just split that off and build it and become the new school of the rest of the tree grow. It, it's a great area. It's, it's a bunch of woods and wildlife there. And it's uh, make a great place to have. Yeah. We met all the criteria. I mean, yeah. I met with James and, and uh, my engineer and we work things out and that was uh, full enforcement to go over everything and everything was in line and now I'm here tonight to make amendments to that subdivision to prove this so we can move forward. Do you have anything Any issues? Well, I know you had some of others that are interested so I think we can find application complete with my recommendation for the public hearing on the 17th, invite any butters have any questions. Get it on the record, get it all squared away, and I think that would be the best. I think that'd be the best. So I had, I had, the, I had some of the butters that were interested? Yeah, really. I've heard several. Wow. So we'll send a notice to everyone. Surprise to me. <laughs> we'll send a, I mean, yeah, it's the addition of, of one lot. Um, it meets all the requirements, but you know, for their edification, we'll invite everyone to the subdivision so they, if they have any outstanding questions, sure. they could be answered. I'm, I'm surprised no one came forward to me and just <laughs> put it out there. And I just, that's, that's kind of a surprise. All righty. Well, so at least we can move forward to find the application complete, which it is tonight. Uh, yeah. I move that we find the application complete. I second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Perfect. So we'll I'm going to come back on the 17th. Yeah. Yeah, for public see us again maybe we can you'll, do it first yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll be in old business now so we can be out of the line <laughs> okay all right well if that's the case that's the case it just it puts it on me is that it this 3.2 anyway, 3.24 acre thank you what is that? yeah that's is that a 3.24 acre? yes yeah okay all right how many you butters are there? I think there's one. So let's try them the other one. Maybe. Let's count that way. Page three of the application. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven lots. Seven lots. The two of them are standing. Okay. So five lots. Okay. But this is only for the director of letters, or just anybody? Anybody. I I get a lot of slack lately if I'm not inviting the whole. I mean, I feel like if we just invite the whole subdivision. Yeah, that's fine. You know, I just. If anyone that has concerns and they want to get it out, yeah. I just wish they come back to me. Yeah, it's, I guess that's not going to happen. I don't know why. Uh, They're all good neighbors, too. I mean, we have a great subdivision. Uh, everybody gets along. It's just, I find that. Uh, yeah, it's probably some kind of a surprise. Maybe it's yeah. someone off. Well, there's probably some mis, you know, miscommunication. They have a problem with adding another lot, or maybe yeah, because I've talked to people in my subdivision, and they all know what we're doing. Yeah, the yeah. rumor mill turns. They might think that 52 are right. going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think I did. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. All right, thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you in the seventeenth, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. Right.
now are the informational items. I think some of the Zoom. Uh, Public comment. Um, we have an informational item on Zoom. Jenny? Public comments. Well, which one are you doing? Informational or public comment? I have no one. No here. one for public comments. Great. Okay. So informational items? Yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to put this on um, kind of camera. Um, we're receiving um, an increased um, amount of complaints about um, trash in yards, junk piles in yards, um, trash blowing all over the streets, things of that nature. And I just wanted to let you know spring is here. Um, we're getting into summer now. Yards really need to be cleaned up. We will, the town will take on writing letters to you um, and potentially bring you to court if you're not in compliance. Um, you check out our ordinance online, brookmain.org, and you can go to the ordinance, um, run down vehicles, that aren't registered or um, trash blowing around your yard, et cetera, are all things that the town will take you to court over and we're going to. Um, I can tell you that every complaint that comes in, we have to do a thorough investigation on it. We have to drive by your house, take pictures, et cetera. It takes up a lot of our time, a lot, a lot of our time. So if you can just be mindful of that, maybe go outside, see what maybe, you know, you can do to help um, make our jobs a little bit easier, I guess I could say, um, and make your neighbors a little bit happy. We would really, really appreciate it. Uh, we don't mind um, investigating these complaints. We don't mind taking them on, but there is like a whole lot of them right now. And it's just, it's not okay. So I just wanted to put that on camera, kind of let the public know um, if you get a letter from us, so be it. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. I also want to make note of the um town vote on june 8th it's going to be before our next meeting so make sure you're there and voting next tuesday <laughs> all right 8 a.m to 8 p.m if there are no further comments or questions uh, live from the esteemed burgess meeting room in the depths of the berwick town hall i'd like to propose a motion to adjourn i'll second that motion all right, on, do we do all in favor of that? Yeah. All, right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Rest in peace, gratitude. <laughs> <laughs>